Hello everyone, and welcome to the remodel unveiling thing of uh, Banshee's Laboratory. I'm very excited to get back to work here finally. I um, spent last couple weeks rebuilding, planning, prepping, getting this whole place ready kind of, you know, for a redo, make it more efficient and feel more spacious in here. <coughs> a lot of work went into this, and as always, I did everything myself. I can do it myself, asshole. It's very, very hard to learn how to build something for the first time that I kind of made up in my head. Um, I've seen, you know, similar things done with uh, the additions I made, but to make it fit and make it work the way I wanted to, I had to kind of figure it out, make it up. Um, we're gonna go over all the supplies I use, give a tour of the place, because I've never done that before. Show a little bit of the nooks and crannies of hidden stuff I have, but I mean, other than that, um, this is gonna be fun. Uh, I'm excited for y'all to see what I've done and what's gonna come, so it's gonna be good. And here we go. Hello, let's get started. First thing I want to introduce you to is Darkness Falls, Wall of Darkness, the wall, whatever you want to call it. Um, I haven't came up with my official name yet, but it's my wall. Now, this might not look like much. It might look kind of weird, pointless, but it's a big help. Um, I've wanted to build this since I very first built this place, but didn't know how to approach it or how to start and didn't know my spacing or room yet. So... I finally built it and it was the first thing I built when I did my remodel. It's a giant easel wall. Now the problem I had in the past of painting skateboards, canvases, anything I've cut out of wood was how am I going to hold it? A canvas on an easel fits perfectly because it's, it's a square, um, but a skateboard anything else couldn't do that. It couldn't be held properly and I knew this wall existed, I just didn't know how to build it or how to approach it until... I built this place and I understood a little bit more about woodworking and here it is. So I'll show you how it is. You might not be able to see it. There's three sheets of metal on here and I screwed them in, built the wall off some hinges to the studs, got a little storage system underneath, blah, blah, blah. But the magnets are everything. Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! Now, if I want to, I could paint 10 boards on this wall. I could paint some canvases. I could set it down, doesn't matter, and it can be moved. And the main thing I'll show you is how it works. And this is my favorite part. If you were to paint something with an odd shape like this, a canvas ain't holding that any way you want to. It's just gonna be flimsy. But on the wall here, you put some magnets where you want them, holds it right into place, you can paint all you want and boom, it's there. If you want to paint something else next to it, get, some, get a skateboard here, get some more magnets, put another board here, right below it, and then, a, you know, I could paint all kinds of different things at one time. And that's my point, because I, kind of a little bit of an overthinker multitasker I paint a lot of things at once I can't just paint one thing and move on to the next that's not how I operate this wall is everything I've wanted You're all I ever wanted. so might not look like much might be an eyesore I'm planning on painting it cool looking anything I paint on here will get messed up anyways because I'm gonna be painting and there'll be over paint like splashing whatever dripping so I'll get messed up but I kind of want to paint something just cool looking giant like a big mouth or I don't know who knows um but this is what I wanted for the entire time I've had this place I've envisioned this wall I didn't have room before so I condensed and did the remodels that you're gonna see this wall was everything so i'm so excited to have it now because it's it's pretty legit i was too legit to quit i'm sure if you've ever seen any video i've made or a picture i've posted of a painting i've done i've said a million times how much i love and use strictly alpha acrylic paint um i use everything they make except the enamel i've not found much use for enamel i don't do that much kind of glass sign painting whatever um i used 
Alpha acrylic. I've, this is what I've used for a long time. The acrylic paint, so good. I can't stress enough how good it is and bright and opaque and easy to work with. Um, and also, I use the two other paints. They have the Alpha uh, Flex, which is their flexible textile paint for flexible stuff, shoes, canvas, leather. D Seriously, I've found uses everything. I use mostly this on shoes. Um, I've done Nikes and slip-ons. It'll stay on anything that's movable, cloth, whatever. It's insanely good. Um, the color system is pretty much everything you would need. You still can mix some stuff up, but across the three sets of paint, um, I use the airbrush paint as well, which I will show you over there in a bit. They have everything you would need product-wise. I order from them constantly, at least once a month. Um, just getting more colors and new products. They are on top of releasing new stuff constantly um, that like you would get anywhere else. They've made it a one-stop shop. I love this company so much. They're super nice, helpful. If I've ever needed anything or had a question, they write me back constantly. Post, share, I can't think of them enough. I've done three art shows now, spit seriously just with their paint, and uh, they're awesome. I will swear by this a million times over again. This is my favorite paint. Um, I can't get enough of it. I've bought so much of their products and stuff I've not even touched because I plan on doing stuff. I am very notorious for buying stuff I have, I'm have. i not gonna use for a while, but I will use it eventually. It's truly what I use um, exclusively. Alpha Acrylic, Alpha Six Corporation is the brand. They make the different products. Uh, the airbrush paint goes hand in hand exactly pretty much with the acrylic. Same colors and everything, so obviously just mixed down, which saves me a lot of time. I would originally mix up my own airbrush paint with their paint and reducer, and it's just not as consistent when I get the ratios wrong, and then it's to me wasting paint. And so I don't like that. I liked having it ready to go. And I'll show you that over there in a second. But um, this is the stuff. I'm rambling, I know. I'm sorry. This is the paint. Oh, use it. Thank you. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? This is probably my most commented on and spoken about item in my studio is my Copic marker collection. Um, it took me years to get this to collection together. It's every single color they make, plus probably a hundred duplicates. Um, bought them from various places, and then the huge amount I bought from another tattooer, name I'm blanking on right now, is years back. Sold this whole collection, and as fun as it was, when I first started, I bought more than I thought I would use. So I sold mine to a big tattoo supply company, the owner actually. Um, wanted them so I sold them and then regretted it right away and then had to rebuy everything I sold years later because with the markers I specifically just use these on shoes these are just for slip-ons and vans for the most part Converse I don't like uh, these nibs are way too delicate to go on the rougher canvas of Converse tears them up I tried once and I was like yep not doing that again so on the vans, they're perfect though. Um, and it is it is a lot of money spent just to work on shoes, but I like doing them more than I, they would make money. I love doing shoes. Very time consuming, tedious. Kind of only like doing them for people who appreciate them for shoes rather than like somebody I don't know. And I, you know, I really like doing them for friends, as weird as that is. This isn't like a, it's a side hustle that really I don't try to hustle. I just like doing them. I can't stress that enough. The off-brand alcohol-based markers I've seen everywhere work perfect for just paper. But if you're really getting serious with it, these can't be beat. Nothing comes close to the quality on Copics. I'll say this a million times. Shout out to Vanna Mesol who, um, I've learned most of my shoe techniques from. I can't stress enough. Like that dude just wrote the game. And uh, yeah, these are my markers. If I'm very serious about my markers. If somebody's ever messing with them, I will like lose my mind. And I don't lose my mind easily. I would definitely fight over my markers. Just note, a side note. As weird as it is, I like plates a lot for painting. 
Um, I'm weird. I've saved everything. I save everything I paint with. This is heavy. I, if I pulled that off, that would be crazy. Um, as crazy as I've saved every paint cut from all three of my art shows. I will show you that um, right now. It is quite a... Uh, I have a problem with being nostalgic. I don't know what that stems from. But, like, I use something and I like it forever. Like, I'm like, that's a part of me. And it was a part of my life. Call me a weirdo. I don't know why I do it. But, uh... Oh! Step into my office real quick. Just kidding. Um, yeah, it's a little office corner uh, computer where I do editing, streaming, pull up reference videos and stuff. Like having it tucked away. So hopefully it doesn't get covered in dust and paint and destroyed, but it's probably going to happen. Um, my DeLorean corner because uh, my favorite movie is definitely not Back to the Future. Hence the neck tattoo. Shout out Jeff Ensminger. But um, yeah, I definitely like having... All this tucked away. Collectibles are all getting covered in dust. It's whatever. Um, definitely this to haunt me um, when I finish the 101 paintings in less than 100 days. The last time I'll ever do the art marathon frenzy again. Definitely going to keep my sanity and just have a normal art show. But yeah, this is the office. I got a bunch of reference books. And yeah, some shoe stuff for customizing Nikes. Webcams. Timer in case I want to time something. Hmm. Yawn. Four seconds. Yeah, this is good stuff, I know. Man, that was perfect. I can't do that again that good. Okay, as for the main desk, we're going to go over everything here. This is where all my little nooks and crannies are. Obviously showed you the Copic, but all the other little things. Um... I use a lot of different mediums when I work on shoes and paintings and all that. So obviously, paint pens being a huge part of it. I like using different kind of brands. Definitely use Alpha Curlic paint pens. Um, Posca, Poshka, Posca. Um, they make a really good, like, priced point paint pen compared to the more high end stuff that I've used. To just be all around good. It's got a softer, more of a cotton kind of nib, which I find smoother than um, for a while. I was just using Molotov, uh, Molotov, however you pronounce it, Molotov um, paint pens. They got like a hard nib, obviously more heavy duty, go the long run, but I feel like they sometimes scratch up if not, you know, damage whatever you're working on. If it's not solid, like wood, you know, like a canvas or something soft. Either way, paint pens are a huge, huge um, help if you spend the money because the average Walmart paint pen ain't gonna last you that long. I would go with just some good stuff. Investing in what you love to me is a huge part of um, the end product. If you, you know, really, really care about something, it's just, it shows. And with me, I probably spend more than I make because I like having the things, you know. This is years and years of me putting my money and time into art to get this kind of a collection. And, you know, I had to get a place. I couldn't do it anymore where I was. I had to literally get a place to do my art because I just like it so much. But yeah, the paint pens, you know, I love them. They're super good. Definitely got some Arches watercolor. I haven't watercolored in a while, um, and I love it, it's fun. Like, I really love the smooth gradients and blends you can get with it. To me, that's like more of an elegance, like a neat, clean kind of painting. Um, very, again, time consuming, you know, for the size of a painting. Um, the very first art show I did that, uh, Willy Wonka Chocolate Room watercolor, it was like a 16 by 24 or something like that, and it took days on end. Um, but again, it was one of my favorite pieces I've done watercolor wise. Um, Prismacolor markers, I still use every now and then just for like quick stuff. Um, I just got used to the Copic blend and I just couldn't use them no more. Um, and just various different things of the sorts with uh, brushes and, you know, tools and razor knives. And I really, one of my big things I use is I use the wax grease pencils. For paintings and drawing on skateboards. I don't know why I like them so much. I feel like they're 
just easy to use. I don't know. I like them a lot. I don't know why I do. I can't remember where I even got them from. I remember seeing it one time somebody used them, and I was just like, yeah, I like this. I think it was four sign painting, and they wipe away, but I ended up using them for everything else. It's just you if you use a dark color and you paint over it, that color shows through. You definitely have to prime it with gesso first and you know maybe get a couple sanding coats of sand on boards and stuff like that. But just building up on the layers will make that go away, and then it's like a soft, faint line. I love doing that. That's like how I do every painting. Um, but uh yeah the things i got i'm really big about brushes i started recently getting nice brushes because i started doing uh more detailed stuff on shoes but with my painting stuff i'll buy the crappiest thing of brushes because to me that's it doesn't matter as long as the brush isn't flared up like your dad's toothbrush you know um for the most part a nice made brush could be cheap expensive it works the same it holds paint and lays it down i i'm i'm bad with them i leave them in the water for days i don't take care of mine so i don't put a lot into my brushes i definitely want to get better about that but that's not something i really like plan on doing soon it's just i like to be messy and to leave stuff worked on because i multitask on my paintings a lot but yeah this this stuff here we go all right side note i'm going to show you these blocks um these are really funny everyone sees them and has no idea what they're for but they're called one two three blocks they're uh for they're literally just weights um they're for holding you could use them for many of things but i got them for weights for when i make uh props and stuff they hold down the paper really well if i'm trying to pin it or just trace out a pattern um but I don't know what they're really used for, but they're called one, two, three blocks because they're one inch by two inch by three inch. So on the fly, you can do quick measurements so I can see how long something is. Like, you know, put that next to that and that's four inches. I don't know. But um, they're like 20 bucks. I don't know. They're kind of funny. But they they become so helpful. Like, I can't make this up. Like, these are so useful and they're just little steel blocks. They have many uses. Hell, you could even, with the holes in them, you could hold like brushes, pencils. I don't know. I think they're awesome though. It's like, I get excited over like neat little tools that like are not that used that I can find a use for. But uh, one, two, three blocks, they're awesome. A big thing I wanted to do as well was make everything mobile. Like be able to move anything where I want. I added wheels to everything when I made this stuff because like this is a really big table. I can work on something and if I don't want to move it or touch it like off, I can push this out of the way to do other things. I, and again, what I was using for all my last paintings was I bought this little slanted easel because now this wall does what this did, but a million times better. And this even got a little lip and everything. So it's pretty much this is that, you know. But yeah, these rolling tables are everything. And I added many layers on them because they hold so much stuff, you know. As crazy as it is, I'm still meaning to use this. I bought this cry cut cricket i never know how you say that cricket cry cut cry cut i would say cry cut but um yeah one of these vinyl cutters because a lot of little tricks and things you could do cutting out of vinyl i think they're awesome but i've yet to use it and i always find myself buying something like i said i won't use for a while but i eventually will use it so i can't wait to try this out for cutting little templates and um stencils for shoes and stuff it's gonna be fun but yeah these floating islands are my favorite thing okay now for the important parts what people were getting mad at me about non-stop telling me i'm dumb for not doing it but it's done ventilation system um i wanted to build this i just didn't know how and I spent a lot of time researching, doing it, and it's done. I built a paint booth. Um, my place has no ventilation or any way of getting out fumes, paint particles, solvents in the air, blah, blah, blah. And I was sitting there just hot boxing, huffing. Even if you wear a respirator and you're doing this, if it's still not out, your respirator, what it does is it filters stuff through, but when you breathe, it opens up for a second and closes. And it's supposed to protect it, but I swear, just when I open up, it just still, if I'm just in a hot boxing of paint fumes that just suck right up in there. And no matter what, even if I'm wearing this, it doesn't help. Um, found out the hard way, but 
this was really hard to build. I had to research a lot with the way air works and how fans work, and you can't just get a fan and suck out the fumes. A fan has a motor that sparks chemicals, spray paint, different stuff in your paint. It's flammable. You suck that through a normal fan, the fan can explode. And I didn't know that. I didn't really do that that much in the past, but I was able to find a non-explosive fan as a motor and the fan are separate, so it's a closed off circuit, whatever. It's all new to me. So I was able to do that and make a system where it sucked out the fumes out of the booth I made and sends it right outside. From the fu first couple things I tested, it actually was pretty cool. I was able to watch the fumes suck out and it wasn't like in my face and I didn't feel that weird after so because normally i paint for a long time i feel it i'm like i can like feel the stuffy nose and i feel a little funny so that's luckily gone very nice but um i'm just like so excited on showing this because this was really hard i built it all by myself i didn't know what i was doing and i see, i feel like i made it work pretty well so be proud please low key though this is what i'm probably most proud of it's my favorite thing I did controls everything and I like made this box put it here wired it all it's pretty cool um, I like that it's the most convenient thing in the world I could do that all day is I'm stupid I know but I love this thing one of my favorite things I refuse to not use it for years now is this coffin um, shelf my dad actually made this it's pretty rad did all the mitering and the cutting whatever it was really cool I asked him for this like years years back to hold my tattoo ink when i first started tattooing so 10 ish years ago and uh he made it and i refuse to let this thing go um so now it holds my airbrush ink um again alpha air uh so alpha six corp same brand this is all airbrush paint for almost every single color of the acrylic paint it matches a couple of the colors are a little slightly different but it doesn't really matter um i wouldn't airbrush the same exact color i just painted it would you wouldn't tell you want to just do variations of it either brighter or darker or whatever but either way um all the paints right here next to the paint booth i could just grab it as i need it pour it and it's very convenient um and then tools tools became something i started getting a lot of as i built this place and started building things and at first maybe a drill was all i ever had maybe a stud finder to hang framed pictures but tools were a complete foreign thing to me and as i started building this place i learned like wow i like tools <laughs> tools are awesome and you go to walmart you go to the cheap aisle and you buy a whatever you know it shows um that stuff is not good. When I first did my cutouts of wood, I just used the, the cheapest uh, jigsaw I could find, and it showed. I cut stuff, it was splintered, ruined things, wasted time, you know, and then going to a brushless DeWalt, um, this router right here is my favorite, uh, router, this jigsaw is my favorite thing on planet Earth. It's got a really cool handle, the way you can hold it. Like, I love it. I could, the stuff I started making now cut with this, you can tell I cut it with this compared to before. It's got all kinds of neat little things it does. And it's a brushless motor, which I guess is better. And it doesn't get as hot. Lasts longer. It's nicer. It's more expensive. But I've learned it. You, you pay, you get. Like, it's go bigger, go home, cheap. You buy twice, whatever the sayings are. And so I started doing all now the same. Like, I got these crazy batteries. You know, I haven't got to use this router yet, but to make to route edges that I cut out to look fancy, like some Victorian frame or something like that. You know, I love these stuff so much. I love all the tools. So I now collect everything, um, everything I can get. I love it. And uh, yeah, the storage system now was the big upgrade. I first built this place, I built this giant box of nothing. It was like two shelves and it held everything, but it took up like a quarter of my studio. It was insane. It was huge. Huge waste of wood too. When I built this place, COVID was in its highest price point era of lumber 
it was outrageous. If I would have waited longer or built it sooner, you would have known, like, from my wallet that lumber is expensive. So I d destroyed that thing, and luckily my sister runs a whole bunch of daycares, and they had these cubbies for kids, you know, and they were getting rid of them, and I was like, don't get rid of them, get them to me. They were heavy as hell. Getting them in here was crazy, but they take up no space, and they hold everything that the other thing held but clears up this whole room where i built the paint booth and have this open space now but the cubbies are game changing they save my studio and my life i love these things and they just look kind of cool i didn't want to paint every inside black because that seemed like it would take a while and honestly it would kind of look crazy if i couldn't see what i'm grabbing but yeah this area um mind the beer bong as funny as it was that one video i literally went to the I went over town to find one of these because you can't buy these anywhere, I guess, anymore. Just to chug that monster that one day for my art show video. It's kind of funny. So I, I like having, I don't even know how that was just held up there. That stayed. That was crazy. I guess it was like that. But yeah, so this holds all my stuff. As you can see, a fucking thousand skateboards. Pardon my language. Uh, I, I, I get boards all the time. Luckily, I skate and I have friends who skate and I have friends who skate a lot. But shout out to my boy Connor Madden because he's, give, he's probably giving me more than half of those boards from his himself because he skates so much. And all the homies, they all give me boards. When they're done, they know I paint them and I'll use them. So it's it's pretty rad because um, buying a, just a blank board to paint would be expensive and it'd be a waste of a new board. Like I paint only skated boards to give them a second life, whatever. I find it like it's recycling for the most part. It's not wasting wood, um, not like some environment nut, but that's just kind of like, I feel like it's not a waste. There's a board, somebody could be skating out there and a thrash board that's done, I'll paint it. And it now has memories, whatever, not to get all weird, but um, yeah. It's, I like doing that, but yeah, this holds a lot of stuff. That's point of uh, all of that. It holds some things, but I definitely like having my um, space. We're on to some more things. We got some solvents and whatnot. Um, probably my most used thing is the Alpha 6 Corporation water base reducer. This um, has multiple uses. Most of the time I thin it to paint with when I paint because this stuff, I don't know, could not tell you really if that's what it's for. It can make, it's, it literally says designed to be used a thinner reducer for alpha acrylic paints. So, I mean, it thins it. I, you know, I'm bad with really knowing what stuff is for. When I find a good use for them, I, that's what I do. But I thin the paints out. It helps. You know, sometimes the paint's really thick. If I want it to be thick, it's perfect. If I want it to be thin, I just use this. And um, I love it. I go through it like crazy. Uh, I got all the Angelus products for the um, shoes. I love their stuff for mixing the two together. It's pretty cool. This stuff is insanely toxic and smelly. But it's the best contact cement when I make my cosplay props. I used almost a whole one of these on my sword I recently made. And um, it's good. Obviously, got a lot of gesso. I highly recommend um, clear gesso. I love this stuff. You can do whatever you want on the canvas first. And then gesso it with the clear. And it doesn't like make whatever you drew on there disappear. I still do use regular gesso if I'm going to prime it up first, but once I draw on it, I then use the regular, uh, the clear gesso to make it so I can see what I'm painting. Again, here's a ton of stuff I haven't even used yet. I got my, um, got my skull, my soul scuffers and skull scrubbers and brushes. I haven't got to use yet for shoes. I can't, I'm super excited on. I actually, this is the respirator I currently am using, my newer one. I, once I use one for a while, I just buy a new one. I, I'm weird about um, using one forever. But, yeah. Tons of different sprayers and sealers and stuff. Yeah. It's the things. 
These two I probably get the most questions for because people have no idea what they are. But uh, this is a bandsaw and this is a spindle sander. Um, insanely helpful. I just use these for props when I make uh, cosplay props. Um, this has got a, a literally it's called a bandsaw because it's got a because a bands that make her dance. No, but um, it's got a literally a a blade that is a band that's constantly spinning. So it's not plugged in right now, so it cut off my finger. But it's got this blade that spins constantly. It cuts things. Whoo, does it cut it good? No resistance. It's insane. Um, and yeah, I use this all the time when I'm cutting EVA foam. And just cut long sheets super smooth that a razor can't do the job. And then spindle sander is kind of funny. It goes up and down and spins. It's kind of weird, but um, when you want to round an edge, oh my god, there's no faster way. Like... You can do this number, whatever, however you want to do it. I've done it for wood when I did some cutouts before. Um, I've used it for the sword I made and then many endless uses afterwards. It's got changeable uh, size spindle, sander, round dowel things, whatever. These things are awesome though. And uh, these two are mounted here because I use these all the time and I like having them ready to go because this thing's heavy I would hate to have to take this on and off so I literally bolted that to this rolling um this rolling cart so yeah these two things though game changing for uh, prop making I love them now I used to have an awesome uh it's called a glue pot it was great you fill it up with contact cement, it has a brush and a handle, and you can brush things and put it back in here, but somehow it just wasn't sealed, and it completely dried up, and uh, yeah, it was $50, and I'm not buying another, because nope, not going through that again, so yeah, I keep it to remember that I wasted $50, but if it works for other people, but it dried out on me, thanks Amazon. Well, we've reached the end of the tour. I'm glad you made it if you did. Big ups. Uh, like I said, I'm very proud of this place. I've never worked harder on something and truly just been so happy. Uh, I know I'm cheesy, whatever, but this is my favorite place to be. I spend every second I can here that I'm not working or playing Destiny, but I'm still working when I'm here. Sometimes I just hang out. Doesn't matter. What matters is um, you made it. So I hope you got some information you could use or you were curious about or you just wanted to support and watch and give a like. I don't really care about that stuff. Uh, it's just cool to share my passion and love with everyone. Um, follow me on whatever media platform you use if I have it. I know I should be TikToking, but I just can't bring myself to. I will soon make art TikToks like I should be, but for the time being, I just like doing the arts and making stuff um thank you thank you thank you for checking out my place uh i will be making tons and tons of more videos now that i have the space i truly want and i can breathe healthy and not die so i love you guys watch out for the next video and take care